So we've been looking at, or starting to look at uh, rings. There are a number of ways that we can use the rings. So let's just have a look at these. So first of all, I'm going to define a variable that's called notes, um, brackets. I'm going to call it ring. And then you basically sort of populate it. So here we're going to add some pitches. Let's say we do E4, D4, C4, B flat 3. So if we wanted to access those notes, if we were doing them by hand, we could then play notes and give it an index value, let's say 0, and then it will play. So if we want to go to the next index value, that should be a D. And then the next index value, which would be 2 which is the C, and here is the last one, and that's the B flat. So we use a live loop. So we create a live loop, um, note player, and let's say that we want to have that sleep for one. And now, instead of saying um, play notes zero, we just do tick. If we just want to go in order, linear fashion, we say play notes dot tick. And it just carries on. If we want it to be random, if you've seen some of the other videos where we've looked at random stuff, then you could use choose. The uh, rings can also just be pitch names without register. Oh. That's because I didn't play it as a tick, it's playing it as a chord. So you can hear there that it's still playing it in that middle C. So one of the things that we might want to do is you have, a, you have an option to do with uh, um, using an octave. So here, use octave. Let's say that we want it to use octave two. So that's added two. So this is two octaves higher than it would play. So let's say we want minus two. So we want it to be two octaves lower. So that's what we have there. One octave lower. Zero, which would mean it would just be it is one because this hasn't got a register in it it doesn't say e3 or e4 this isn't a specific identifier um when you when you set the notes in as they are here without three four or whatever um it, it basically it, it defaults to a particular octave okay so if we said back to these numbers e4 c4 and B flat three. Let's put it at zero. You can hear that the effect is just a little bit different because we're dealing with a with a named um, uh, octave. Now, other ways that rings can be expressed, you might also see rings um, like this. So the ring is on the outside. So rather than being on the inside of, of the brackets, it's on the outside. To all intents and purposes, certainly at, at this stage, there isn't there isn't really sort of much of an uh, appreciable difference. Finally, the rings can also contain note numbers. So sixty four. 62, 60, 58. So that uses MIDI note values, and that's what can go uh, into the ring. You know, the rings can hold almost anything. Let's, let's try this. So here is 4, 2, 0, 
minus 2. This basically represents the interval differences between the E, D, C, B flat. You know, that's what we're hearing there. But we can no longer access them as, as play notes dot tick. Um, we need to kind of have a a sort of a a pivot point from which to work. So let let's let's call that pivot equals um, middle C sixty, right? Play notes dot tick plus. Actually, let's do it the other way around. <clears throat> let's do play pivot plus notes dot tick. So you can see there that having determined a fixed point, the pivot, the notes for your melody could be just sequences of numbers um, that, that need only be between 0 and 11 to give you 12 distinct values representing the chromatic scale. And then what you end up doing is shifting the pivot point around, let's say, in terms of what it is. Okay, until next time.